Well, here we are, Amy, for another Birds of a Feather episode. And how are you in Maryland enjoying, a, uh, I imagine, a very nice summer? Yeah, enjoying my summer. Um, my, my youngest is about to go away to college in a month. But my oldest has moved back in out of graduate school. She's now poor, but working. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just when just that, when you think you've emptied the nest, they keep like coming they swap, back. And I still have the middle one here. She's saving money. Um, so yeah, life is yeah, it keeps changing a little bit for us, but it's interesting. There's always, okay. there's always something enough. going on. A lot of eating, you know. Oh, I bet. Yeah, my Love eating. I've got a fourteen-year-old son, and I caught him yesterday eating two bacon bagels. So two massive <laughs> bagels stacked with <laughs> with bacon, and the kid just like basically inhaled them. Sounds like a dream. Yeah, so like a fourteen-year-old carb carbohydrate absorption machine. <laughs> so, oh boy. So well, yeah. How about uh, threads? Have you looked on threads? Have you been doing that? Like yeah, I st I started out on threads. I thought, well, thing. I got to get on there because that's where everyone is. But when I got on there, all I got was like I got like everyone. Everyone was yeah. there, and there well, was all your inst. Are you on? I guess you're on Instagram. So I'm, all I'm your on Instagram. Instagram but I was getting everyone, and I was right. I felt, I felt like aren't. I was yeah everything from everyone all at once. And I was getting a bunch of soft porn jokes. Um, yeah, I know. Um, a bunch of ads for different things. A mm -hmm. whole bunch of accounts I had never heard of. And I, quite frankly, did not want to follow. Yeah. And I was a little the bit... The aren't as specified for us. Yeah, I thought, okay, the algorithm doesn't quite know where I'm at. I'm not right. really into meeting, you know, young, sexy Asian women who are eager to meet me. <laughs> um that's that's not kind of where i'm at and that's kind of what i got hit with when i first hit Wee. threads so uh. so but um yeah now i'm starting to see a little bit more of um equilibrium in my uh in my threads package um but yeah i still i still prefer twitter though i still prefer twitter though right uh, it's and, hard and, and, because are you back on twitter just, well, yeah so i'm back my account has now been restored from being hacked that was terrible um and it was like some sophisticated hack too so um that Those was opc guys know what they're doing <laughs> oh, sorry did <laughs> i, I say opc was. i i sorry that was <laughs> it was too sophisticated for that <laughs> but um yeah so that was like three week hiatus um which was in some ways kind of nice I didn't stress out over it and I went on vacation during that time and just kind of had some peace and but I'm back on there and yeah I'm, there's more stimulating conversation over on Twitter it seems like mm. but I can go over to threads and you know not be called Sa Satan's secretary because like, now you know, it's, lacking, <laughs> it's lacking those anonymous accounts so yes. like yeah um yeah there's there's not this oh what am i going to be called today okay Something over there yeah okay fair enough but fair same enough. thing though still trying to like figure out my people over yeah. there because yeah my algorithm too is just like well I'm not really interested in, in what's on my feed yeah there was there was a lot of stuff in my feed i thought this is not this is not my um taste interest and like mm -hmm. i just felt like yeah i was getting an avalanche but anyway but i mean twitter is good because i find it's a good way to, to keep in contact with the news and things that are happening around the world and the theological world the church world and that type of thing and a few weeks ago the southern baptist convention said that women cannot be pastors of any type at all now technically the uh, the baptist faith and message says the role of pastor is restricted to men but from what i've been told the understanding was and the interpretation was that the pastor there meant senior pastor so mm -hmm. you know and if you're you know if you believe pastors and elders are the, you know, effectively the same thing and you're a complementarian you know that makes sense you know that's that's their view but they've now kind of narrowed the restriction of pastor which means you can't have a female associate pastor you can't have a female youth pastor 
You can't have a female worship pastor. You can't, you know, the word pastor must remain a hundred feet away from women. <laughs> women. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I found, I found this perplexing and even many of my complementarian friends find it perplexing because I know complementarian churches where, you know, where they have like a, a male senior pastor, they may not even allow women to speak uh, from the pulpit or if they do, they're kind of tag teaming with a, guy uh but they have like female pastors like an associate pastor or a youth pastor i think having female youth pastors is a really really good idea because 50 percent of the youth will probably be female and i'll be perfectly honest with you with a male youth pastor always that weird temptation that the you that the youth for a 23 year old that it becomes his own little personal dating app i mean that's always the risk mm -hmm. With youth, with youth pastors. Yeah, that's the bit of a risk. So I think having female youth pastors is a very good idea. Um, so what, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this, Amy? You know, as a former Presbyterian and now kind of floating in what am I of denominational worlds, I, it is interesting because it reveals there's so many layers to this, you know, and one of the layers, you know, once I get past the misogyny of <laughs> the way they rushed to pass this, you know, when uh, the, these huge abuse cases, you know, that are so huge in number um, have been ignored for so long that they're, you know, now under federal investigation um, for it. Um, you know, I think it was what, 12,000 messengers show up uh, to vote on this. And uh, maybe 50 showed up for the meeting they had on abuse at the same convention. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's that, that layer, which is just hard to get past that layer already, right? Like that's just, to me, there's so much revealed here. What, what's important? Um, and then there was the whole CRT thing, you know? Yeah. They're, they're losing minorities like crazy hmm. because of, you know, what's being revealed about what they care about. But um, but then there's an ecclesiology that is now being revealed or lack of, I feel like in the Baptist church, like even when, um, when you know, everybody went crazy because Beth Moore preached on Mother's Day, um, you know, Every I was in the end. OPC then. And so, you know, obviously I'm in a denomination that would, wouldn't have had a woman preach. But for me, what was even more odd because of the ecclesiology in the Presbyterian church was to have a Mother's Day sermon. You know, like that just wasn't a thing. You didn't do, you didn't do that. So um, I, I feel like there's just like these um, ecclesiology differences that uh, are being revealed now within their own camp, which again, the ba Southern Baptists have always said that, you know, here's the important things and we can disagree on some of these other things. Mm. But it's even like, what is the function of a pastor? What is the function of, a, or what is the function of an elder and a deacon? You know, um, mm. who who do we call pastor? Like, they don't all agree on all of that. I know. So what they well, they agree now, that women cannot be pastors. That's the one thing they agree on. <laughs> we don't know what a pastor is. We don't know that, this is dude, what I'm we saying. Don't know how many like, there are? You know, but women cannot do whatever it. Whatever it is, women cannot do it. You know, like, uh, and then so what is this going to cause? Uh, probably manipulation of titles of things, you know, I, yeah. I think more confusion about ecclesiology, uh, you know, how, what their church government is and who does, you know, what their titles are, you know, and all these kind of things. Um, I, I think it's revealing like a lot of different things about how their government even works. Yeah. I mean, I think you'll end up with a bunch of worship pastors now being known as worship directors. There'll be something weird, but, yeah. but it'll be They're just so... going to manipulate the titles. Exactly. So, I mean, they'll still be, the woman will still be doing the same job, the same function, but they'll just, just change, wonder, change the name for semantic reasons. How many women are going to say, I mean, I just can't imagine being like, okay, fine, call me a, a woman's or a worship director. The fact that my very womanness is a threat, you know, I don't know, after all of these things, after the abuse, after the CRT stuff, after, um, you know, these 12,000 messengers rushing to make sure that women can't preach, you know, even 
the fact that, you know, Beth Allison Barr, I believe was the one who wrote the article for the Washington Post saying, you know, Rick Warren obviously gets to speak and defend himself and his appeal and speak for other women. You know, what? how many women get to speak for themselves mm. in this, you know? And, and it stinks. I think another one woman pastor got like, 15 minutes where Rick Warren got way more and yeah I, th I think Rick Rick Warren was trying to do a good thing right it, it did look like a bit like his own grandstanding exit um and I'm not too sure he helped the court and, and I felt I felt there were two things going on number one do the opposite of Rick Warren what Rick Warren wants I think that was the number one priority whatever Rick Warren wants do the opposite <laughs> I think that was that was one idea. And secondly, what I find, and this is this is probably my number. I love my Southern Baptist friends. I've got good things to say about them. Yeah, and there's some great people in Southern yep. Baptist. But church. I would say the number one heresy in the Southern Baptist Convention is that they prize conservatism over orthodoxy. And mm. that is there is a race to be the most conservative person in the room, which meant you're constantly rushing to the right. I mean, I mean, it's the mm -hmm. same like on on progressive progressives are always in a race to see who's the most progressive person in the room. And you can you can go from being a, you know, Marxist communist to a right wing fascist just by refusing to drift further to the left. And I've had friends mm -hmm. that's happened to like I'm still like 1990s left wing and everyone's <laughs> now gone into some really weird. You know, I, I, over my life, I've gone from being called a, you know, a, you know, communist atheist all the way through to kind of right wing fascist because mm -hmm. I stand up for, you know, some things like women's rights as, as we used to think about them. So I think mm -hmm. it's the same thing in the Southern Baptist Convention. There is a race to the right you, in the sort of um, the, the podiums of power on the platforms. Mm. You, if the, the person who's considered the leader or who's got the momentum is the person who is always pushing further to the right. And so people will keep proposing stuff to make sure that they, their little sub tribe, their networks are, are, are at the, at the pointy end of that jump to the right. So rather than say, these are our Baptist distinctives. This is what the Orthodox Christian faith is beyond those distinctives and orthodoxy. You've got the freedom of movement within the autonomy. It's then, then they're, they're narrowing certain elements because that's what helps certain people keep themselves as the guy who's leading the surge to, to the further to the right. It's very um, fear-based too, you know, mm. um, and, and what it takes to be able to belong um, is to me a faux belonging then, you know, because you're basing it on, on these things, but it's not just in the Southern Baptist convention. I mean, that's happening in the Presbyterian church. That's what I mm. experienced in the Presbyterian church, but even now they're like passing things um, where they're trying to get it so, and, and this is in the PCA, I believe, uh, so that, you know, on the far right end, which is very loud and active, um, they're trying to pass it or already have, I can't remember, so that women cannot even read scripture from the what, in public it, during well, worship. This, this and some, some churches already practice that in the OPC and the PCA, like that. They believe that only elders or, or church officers, you know, which obviously can't be women, um, can even read scripture. But now they're trying to specifically, like that's by church more. And so now they're trying to specifically say across the denomination, you know, they're just trying to, like you're saying, keep the women a hundred feet away from whatever, you know, possible um, listening. <laughs> We wouldn't want her to speak for God. We wouldn't want her to, uh, us to have to listen Yeah. to her. So that's, you know, and then I wonder, and I wanted to ask you this as we're talking about it. I mean, how do you see the future of the ACNA going? Because, oh, you know, yeah. there's two views within the ACNA and, and you guys are, um, you know, supposed to be able to hold that loosely. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I know some people in the ACNA. Um, they've got a few other bigger problems at the moment. The way uh, I think one particular diocese has handled some abuse allegations. I think yes. that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, but they had a tension from the very beginning of their inception that they allow diocese. 
Yeah, and that's because they've got a mixture of kind of conservative evangelicals, um, Anglo-Catholics, and then you've got what I would call um, uh, evangelicals who are conservative theologically but socially progressive. Okay, mm -hmm. so you, you've got that kind of a, a of a tension. That's what's my reading of it. I people can correct me in the, in the comments below, but that's that's my understanding of it. Yeah, and that tension does bubble out in in some ways um, within the way you know the transfer of ordination between dioceses you know can become problematic. Right. And yeah, I, I don't know what's what's going to happen on that in in the long run. Whether it's a tension they learn to live with. But, you know, in my own diocese, in the Diocese of Melbourne, um, where we are Anglican, we do have some very different views about women. I would say probably about 60 to 80 percent are probably more egalitarian. The complementarians are more of a minority. But, you know, there are people there who hold those views and they're allowed to hold them. They're allowed to run church. They're allowed to be a, you know, reform complementarian church um, as long as they're not doing anything terribly in injurious to, um, you know, women. Or like that, so we 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 do a, a reasonable amount of liberty on both sides. Although you know we have female bishops, so you know I would say we're a kind of de facto uh, egalitarian uh, in that sense. But we we do create space, conscientious space for complementarian pastors, ministers, and and, and churches. But yeah, I mean, l learning to live with difference is uh, at a theological level. What are the differences which are acceptable and which are the ones that are not? Right. is what every denomination struggles with um but i'm just perplexed that the sbc chose that the definition a narrow definition of pastor to be the kind of the hill they want to die on Not given all the other things that are happening around mm -hmm. the world and i can tell you amy in the last two years i've met with a large number of Southern Baptist women who have reached out to me either by email or they've wanted a Zoom chat or they've just said, can I talk to you for 10 minutes at a conference? And they've always said, I love my Southern Baptist church. I've always felt at home, but they feel like there's a difference between how I'm viewed now to the way I was viewed 10 years ago. Wow. And a lot of, a lot, a huh. lot of them are heading out to non-denominational churches a lot of them are turning anglican and mm -hmm. there is this there is That's an exodus there is an exodus of southern baptist women and, and you know at one level it's not just the beth moore and the karen swallow priors there are a lot of women that some of their best and brightest women uh, mm -hmm. are fleeing mm -hmm. and it's not because they've suddenly you know become liberal and you know, joined a witch's, witch's coven or something like that. They're saying, we're not the ones who have changed. Everyone, yeah. again, it's that race to be the most, what's, what's, what's the most conservative and almost punitive position we can take about women as proof mm -hmm. of how doctrinally righteous they are. Mm -hmm. And they don't see a future for themselves because they know it's only going to get worse. And so, right. yeah, so a it's number not of, safe. Yeah. I mean, that's, I'm, I know some, you know, wonderful Southern Baptist preachers, mm. even nearby. And so when um, we left the OPC, um, there was a small church plant that uh, we actually, a Southern Baptist church plant that we hid out in for about six months to heal, um, you know, part of our healing time, because we knew the pastor and his wife, and, and that that church isn't into all this crazy hierarchy, authority type thinking. And, um, you know, they were good people. But we said coming in, like, we're not going to join this church. You know, I'm not going to go from one uh, dysfunctional <laughs> um, denomination where I'm not safe to another one where I won't be safe um, or other people. Um, so, you know, we didn't, we only stayed for about six months. And, and I, I was invited to preach at a Southern Baptist church, yeah. you, you know, within a half hour from here. Um wonderful pastor who's really kind of ministered to me, you know, very kindly through what I've been through. Um, so, the, you know, there are wonderful people in there, but, you know, for me, it's definitely like, why, why are you going to stay in a denomination that hurts people? I mean, it hurts people. 
Yeah, well, um, I'm speaking to a lot of women who don't see a future for themselves in that denomination, and it's sad, and they grieve for it because it's, you know, it's the church of their grandparents, their parents. Right, it's the church the of church, my grandparents. Church where they got baptized, the church where they've where been serving for five or ten years, and mm -hmm. you've got, like, I'm I'm tolerated, and I'm, and I'm treated with suspicion, so yeah. yeah that's difficult well and you know it's just as bad to feel like you're being tolerated exactly that's a horrible feeling you know yeah. Yeah. you're not a contribution you don't really belong you're just allowed to be there <laughs> yeah i know i know that's that's how i feel that's at family terrible way to feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know mike <laughs> yeah it's like it's oh it's michael and naomi oh, no it's naomi and michael <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, that's not true. My, uh, my my family is very good. My family is is anyway. very good. Well, let's leave it there. I think um, I think we've covered the topic well enough. And you know, I, I would just if there's any Southern Baptist friends watching this, look, we're not trying to pillory you or pick on you, but which I guess we're providing what the view looks like from the outside. And I and you know, Amy and I both know that there are complementarian people out there. We understand the convictions and the things. I guess we're just perplexed as to why it's becoming more narrow and more extreme when it need not be that way. I, I mean, is that, is that, that your way of seeing it, Amy? That's the, you know, my nicest way of seeing it, Mike, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like I said, there's so many Southern Baptist people that I, I love and think are serving so well. And, you know, you want the church to do well, mm. but by that means that you want the church to be pointing us all to Christ. And yeah. I, I'm just not seeing that. And and now I'm, I'm feeling a lot of concern about really, honestly, psychological, emotional, and even physical safety of a yeah. lot of people. Um, so I, I, I'm highly concerned as well. Yeah, those are, those are legit concerns to have. Okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there for now. Uh, as you know, I'm Mike Bird. This is the amazing Amy Bird, and hopefully we'll see you for another episode of Birds of a Feather. Take care till then.